But most people think about river cruising, we think about Europe, getting into the interior of the continent, seeing the historic towns, magnificent cathedrals and other attractions. But today, we're gonna go beyond Europe and talk about river cruising to some of the world's exotic destinations all over the globe. So I'm pleased to be joined here in the Notary Hotel in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, by Kathy DiVincenzo from AMA Waterways, Corey Green, AAA Travel Advisor, and Kate Rockus, our AAA Group Travel Expert. Let's talk about why river cruising is a great choice to experience a more exotic destination. With AMA Waterways, we're the ultimate luxury experience. So you are on these river destinations, but you have champagne at breakfast, beer and wine at lunch and dinner. You have expert guides. So you're seeing these destinations in the absolute lap of luxury. And let's talk about some of the destinations in particular that you can experience by river cruise. Well, we have South Africa, which I just did. We have Vietnam and Cambodia. We just started sailing in Egypt on September 5th on our brand new ship, and we are going to Colombia. Oh, that's in exciting. 2023. Love that. So when you think about river cruising to an exotic destination, I know people are always looking for that immersive experience. So are you able to deliver on that again in, in some of the destinations you just mentioned? Well, let me just talk a little bit about Africa. So when we were on the Chobe River on the Zambezi Queen, we were able to do game drives in the morning and the afternoon. We would come up to animals on a flat bottom boat. We would see herds of 400 elephants and we would watch them go across the river with the babies or in the afternoon Noon, we'd have a jeep drive through the jungles. It was fabulous. And then in between, we would have this luxury lunch that would, they would put out in the bush. So it was just absolutely an immersive experience. But something that we did that was just one of those things that you remember for your life is we did a save the rhino hunt. So this was a little bit of an extra that we included, um, but what we did is um, Ama Waterways partners with different people in South Africa to save the rhinos. They're very endangered. So it was a safe hunt with veterinarians. So they would tag a rhino from the air and the vet would put earmuffs on them and they would safely remove the horn because the horns are worth about half a million dollars. So poachers kill them for the horns. This way they're saved. So that day we saved three rhinos. And it was one of those things where I'll never forget it. Yeah, it was incredible. just wonderful. So we can provide these experiences. In Egypt, we bring different people on board that are gonna tell you history and culture. But then we have three Egyptologists right on the ship and these Egyptologists are going to take people on their tours. So it's going to, again, be a cultural immersion. And I'm sure we're going to have the same when we go to South America. And I think it's really important that you just talked about the fact that you've got the Egyptologists right on board the boat and that you still have those immersive land experiences because I think people here are cruising and they think, well, I'm not going to get in there and do all of that in the destination or I'm not going to have the experts. So, that's really great. You do far more than people would imagine. We do tours in the morning and the afternoon, and when we were in the bush, we did game drives in the morning and the afternoon. Some people even wanted a little extra in the morning. They even went fishing. And we provided all those things because they asked. So there's different things that we can do that you wouldn't do on a land vacation. Now, I know one of the most important parts of planning is deciding when to travel somewhere, right? So when we think about Europe, you know, in a river cruise scenario, you can typically go most times of year. Uh, does that vary based on the destination that you're looking at? Is that a major factor with more exotic destinations? It is a huge factor. And because you have the most professional travel agents, they're very aware of the seasonality. Like, you don't go in rainy season to Vietnam. And we don't sail in rainy season in Vietnam because it's too hot and muggy. Same thing with South Africa. We don't go in rainy season there because you want it a little bit drier because the animals come in for water in the dry season. So you get to see a lot more game when it's a little bit drier. So we just make sure that we manage everything so that the people get the ultimate experience when they're on Ama Waterways. All right, Kathy, as we've talked about river cruising in these exotic destinations, what's one advantage that you've got river cruising that you might not find if you went to a destination another way? Well, with AMA Waterways, you get the best of both worlds. We're going to provide tour options for you. So you're going to have the ship that's going to have gourmet dining, beautiful accommodations, 
but you're going to go to exotic and interesting places that we vetted for you and they're going to be included and you're going to have choices so it's included it's part of the immersion so really it's everything and nobody has to worry whether i should do one or the other you're doing it all together with ama waterways all right corey so i know that you recently traveled to cambodia and vietnam on a river cruise i sure did so why don't you share with us a little bit about how you decided cambodia and vietnam that's where i want to go so when i travel i like to experience culture I like to see how other people live their life day to day. And I thought, why not go over to Asia? I haven't been over there yet. And I want to see how they live their life, which was just very fascinating to me. And um, we really got to see the day to day life of uh, the Vietnamese and the Khmer as well over there. So that's why I chose there. And how about a river cruise in particular? What, what made you decide to travel there via river cruise? Looking at the ports, um, with a river cruise in Vietnam and Cambodia, you also have pre and post. And along the river, there are so many different small towns and areas that you don't get to experience on some of these other land tours and everything. You hit the major spots with those, whereas a river cruise, you go to these tiny towns and you really get to see um, what it has to offer, what those countries have to offer. Corey, you mentioned pre and post. So for somebody who's not familiar with what that means, can you explain that a bit? So pre and post are portions of the cruise where you're actually staying on land. You're, uh, for example, in Saigon, you stay in the Sofitel uh, Hotel right in Saigon, and you do tours and everything right there, right before you, you get on the ship. And then in the post at Kampong Trelek, they actually take you up to Siam Reap, Hanoi and Ha Long Bay, which is not a miss. You do not want to miss Ha Long Bay. And um, you actually stay at hotels there as well as part of the cruise package. And you mentioned um, different ports. So what are some of the ports that you saw on your trip? So we did Saigon, Siam Reap, and Phnom Penh, the ports that people do know. Uh, but we also went to a place called Evergreen Island, which is mostly farming. We actually got off and walked around the farm and saw how people farm there. We even um, visited somebody's house there and went in and saw how they lived. Um, we went to Odong where we visited a monastery and we got blessed by a Buddhist monk there. And we got to go up and see the Silver Pagoda and overlook the, the Twin Peaks there. Um, Kai Bay with their floating markets, which are not like uh, Taiwan's floating markets, very different. Um, and it was just uh, Kampong Trelek right there, right before you get to Siam Reap, we, which are places people haven't really heard of over here, and we got to see them. That's great. Sounds like you did a lot. How long was that trip that you got to see all those amazing sights? So with the extensions, it's about 14 days. Um, the cruise itself is seven. Uh, you will want to allow a day and a half to get there um, and back but it was a seven day cruise. And then we added on um, some places in the beginning and the end. So 14 days altogether. And when you think of all the places that you visited and the things that you did, are there certain experiences that stand out in your mind as real highlights? There's quite a few highlights. Um, as, as Kathy mentioned, snake wine. So it is rice wine with uh, King Cobra snakes inside of it for flavor, I'm guessing. Um, and me and I actually travel with my mom a lot. Uh, me and my mom tried it and it's it's very good. Only drink a little bit. Uh, You're still not, here though, seems like I'm, it's safe. I'm still I here, mean. it's safe. <laughs> it's, um, it's actually quite delicious. Uh, another experience that we had was in a town in Cambodia. We went to a local school and we helped them um, Ama set it up where we, we actually helped children learn English. They sung the Itsy Bitsy Spider to us. We helped them learn sentence, uh, completing sentences. And we got to sit one-on-one -on -one with some of these children, which was just phenomenal. Um, we got to do an ox cart ride. I, I made rice paper and we actually popped rice. Uh, so there's a lot of experiences that stick out. All right, Corey, thinking about seasonality, when should somebody plan a trip to Cambodia and Vietnam? So I personally went in April. I would say November to April during the dry season is the best time to go. If you want a deal, April usually has deals. It is very warm there during April, so maybe March and before would be the best times to go. 
If you had one thing you'd want to share with somebody who's considering traveling to Cambodia and Vietnam, what would that be? Take your own culture, place it aside, and just accept and take in everything that you're seeing while you're over there. It's very different, but it's very enlightening, and you learn a lot about this world when you go over there. Kate, I know that you were recently in Egypt on the Nile, so what made you decide to visit Egypt via a river cruise? Oh, Tony, it was such a fantastic trip. Um, well, I think the river cruise is definitely the way to go see Egypt. As we know, Egypt is basically a desert, and then you have this Nile river running through it, which is its lifeblood. Um, you know, it sustains the rich soil and the irrigation and the power. So the majority of the population is going to live along the Nile. Um, and plus, if you think back to ancient times, that was really the main transport. So the majority of your temples are also built along the Nile. So as you wake up each day, you're right next to these beautiful temples that are just steps away from you. I know that Egypt is trending now as another popular destination. Why do you think that is? Well, I think, Tony, for years, people didn't see Egypt as a tourist destination, and now it is. And uh, we're just so lucky that it is. And I felt very, very safe on this trip. It was wonderful, and they're very welcoming to tourists, and they're very happy to have us there. So, uh, you know, it's, some, it's definitely something you don't want to miss. I'm sure the pyramids and the sphinx and the mummies are on everybody's bucket list. So how many days did it take you to experience all of that on your trip? Well, our cruise actually ex included several nights in Cairo on the land before we started, so we could make sure that we saw everything. Um, from there, we were on the ship for seven nights. We flew to Luxor from Cairo. Uh, we saw the Valley of the Kings and the Temple of Karnak. We, you know, King Tut's tomb. Um, we could go to Abu Simbel. There's, we saw everything that we needed to see. Overall, I think we were there about 10 nights. And you talked about a lot of sites that you got to see. What are some of the real highlights for somebody that's going to cruise down the Nile? Well, first of all, it has to be the temples and um, the pyramids. The pyramids, especially, I have to say, if you can go now, as the world is building up their confidence to travel again, there were just no crowds. And it was the most incredible experience that I've ever had with travel. Uh, going down into King Tut's tomb, seeing the Valley of the Kings, the Sphinx. I mean, we climbed the pyramids. It's, it was just an amazing experience, just something you read about. Now, we've talked with the other destinations about when is the right time to travel. I'm sure that that's a real factor in Egypt with those temperatures. So when's the best time of year for people to go? The most moderate temperatures are from October to April. And what kind of temperatures did you experience while you were there? We went in early October. And it was warm, but it certainly was not unbearable. So what's your one favorite memory of that entire trip? Oh gosh, that would be really hard to just pick one. I think for me, sailing down the Nile and seeing the palm trees and along the Sahara Desert, that just blew my mind away. You know, you just don't expect to see this rich greenery around the desert. And of course, seeing the camels walking along the pyramids, you know, just, I can picture it all still so perfectly. So I hope a lot of people take the opportunity to go experience it now. Thank you to the Notary Hotel here in Philadelphia for hosting today's discussion. A little bit of history about the property. This building actually dates back to 1926 and served as a city hall annex. But today, the Notary Hotel is known for its modern touches, elegantly designed rooms, and the grand lobby that we sit in right now, which even features an antique typewriter collection. If you're interested in learning more about river cruising, please visit us at AAA.com slash travel.